and we are your narrators for this show. And here, we, the GMI's middle school productions, are proud to present our third Broadway production, The Dear Departed. The Dear Departed originally was a hit written by Stanley Houghton, and it went all around Manchester and other English theaters. Our play is a modern take of the age-old hit. We added some extra dialogues and scenes to suit the time. And no, we were joking when we said Broadway earlier. To us, this stage, our school play area, is the Broadway stage. What you are going to watch now is our theater program, written by Stanley Hutton and directed by our teachers, brilliantly supported by the wonderful actors, stage, and props department. Thanks a lot to Met Principal for this wonderful opportunity. But before we show you our drama, we would like to show you a small mime. Now you must be wondering, what is this now? The art of miming originated in ancient Greece, and the word mime is taken from a masked artist named Pantomimus. Miming is the art of conveying a message through exaggerated gestures or body movements without the use of words or props. So just watch it and please enjoy.
voice of an old man through a poem. It is a conversation between the little boy and the old man. Said the little boy, sometimes I drop my spoon. Said the old man, I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do that too, laughed the little old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded, so do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay attention to me. And he felt the warmth of a wrinkled old hat. I know what you mean, said the little old man. Now, we would like to show you an outcry of an old man. Stop it. Okay. What is it, my dear wife? Why don't you talk to me slowly? 
Show some love and you get love in return. Please tell me what needs to be done. Oh, so now I'm going to show others how many you go on your knees? No, what makes you say so? You left the window open so that the neighbors can see you begging with warning. No, no one can see from outside. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. Bad manners. Okay, please continue. Oh, I have nothing to say. But in case I had... How would I know that? Aren't we supposed to know each other well? We have been married over 10 years by now. 10 of them. Yes. Don't just say yes. You know when you that you're avoiding me. No, I am not. Why do you have so much ego? Accept your mistake and correct them. Please tell me what is missing. I can't figure it out. Please help me. You are a buddy from a good university. That's what you boast to me. And now you need help from a school teacher. You asked me how much I'm educated. And you replied within seconds. That's supposed to. You could at least get quiet for a minute and then say Especially when you know your wife didn't put your education to the incident. At the high school prom. See? You're taking that out now. You promise you'll never talk about it. Enough. You tell me what needs to be done. Whoa, whoa. Show this much anger to boss and you might even get a promotion. Tell me what needs to be done. Say things in so much as pitch, so I can hear it. Tell me what needs to be done. Well, first, if you're responsible, I love your wife. I do. Then why is the book on the table? Here you go. You owe me the things I tell you. You don't do it on your own. No. These are the words I should have said, but instead I say I do. Just leave me alone. You mean your behavior will leave you alone in this world? I'm giving you opportunities. Not everyone gets that. I don't need an opportunity. I'm good the way I am. Just pick up the door. Telegraph. It's a telegram from your sister. My sister?
let me see, a new golf cap? Yes. How did you not forget all this? Hmm, I'm not sure. Let me tell you, you never forget whatever is important to you. Not like that. You forgot my mom has a zoo. What's after the zoo? I can't figure out your mom from the other islands. What? I told her not to wear that hat with puzzle feathers. I even told her not to go to close the cages. Because all of my shook her, thinking no animal was trying to escape. So when my mom was running after you shouting your name, you thought she was a bird or something? No, I forgot my name. Reasons, reasons. This time continue. You need to be more responsible. For your mom? No, for your forgetfulness. It's not that I'm in control. Okay, why don't you forget your mother anywhere? I don't know. Let me tell you, she's your mother and she's very important to you. Okay, she also doesn't leave my hat. Okay, you never forget your parents' birthday, but you always forget mine. We were both born on Christmas and I was raised as a Christian. You never forget to go play golf. My friend saw me up. You never forget to watch your favorite TV show. It comes at the same time, every day. You never forget your favorite dish at the restaurant. I've been eating that same dish since I was a child. Don't you forget to empty the trash, do the dishes, and feed the cat. I see the cat sitting on the trash, doing the dishes. So I don't want to serve it. Why? You do not want every cat in the house. And after seeing it leaving those dishes, I don't want to see it. Goodness, clear your excuses. I'm the trash and dishes. Take care of your respect of the cat. Stop it. Stella, let's just look at the dishes. Stella? Did you just call me Stella? Stella's the name of the cat. <laughs> anyway, just take us to the kitchen. Look, Mom, I'm ready. I'm amazed at you, Victoria. I really am. How you can gallivanting about the street with your grandfather lying cold upstairs? Now go and change your dress before your aunt Elizabeth sees you in colors. Okay, Mom, but well, what are they coming here for? They haven't been here for ages. They're coming to talk over poor grandfather's affair. Your father said it was telegram as soon as he found out he was dead. Now come here, eh? You can see, they have that can't you? Now Victoria, be off upstairs. Okay, Mom. I'm not satisfied, but it's the best we can do to our black story. And Ben and Elizabeth will never have to let a warning yet. Well, shy them there. Get your boots off, Henry. Elizabeth, that pride she knows the least best dirt. I wonder if they'll come at all. The last time I missed the quarrel, she said she would never step foot in your house again. She come fast enough after what Grandma said. You know how she can be like that. I wonder where she gets it from. I suppose it's in the family. What do you mean by that, Henry Slater? Uh, I was afraid your father, not you. Um, where are my slippers? In the kitchen, but you want a new pair. Those old ones are nearly worn out. You don't seem to realize what it's putting me to break like this. I see grandfather's tracks lying around, and he will never use them again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Here, you better wear these grandfather's now. It's yeah. ready to buy new pair. But they'll be very small for me, dear. Yeah? They'll stretch, won't they? I'm not going to have them wait for them. Henry, I've been thinking about the hero in Grandfather's room. Who wanted to have your dad? Well, we must arrange with Elizabeth when you're dividing things up. Elizabeth's that sharp. She'll see him after it and drive a hard bargain over it. And what is this, that low money grubby spirit? Perhaps she's got her eye on the beer as well. She's never been here since Grandfather bought it. And besides, it was only down here instead of upstairs. She'll never think it was her own. Amelia, that's stealing. Henry, why should we bring it down here now? We can do it before they come. I wouldn't care if we... Don't look so dark. Why not? It doesn't seem delicate somehow. We could put that shabby old chest of drawers upstairs where the bureau is now. Elizabeth has that well done. I've always wanted to get rid of it. And suppose she comes when we're doing it? I'll unlock the front door. Get your coat off, Henry. I'll run up and move the chairs out of the way. I've got the back, Mother. I'm busy. Get your father to do it. Will you, Father? And uh, what have you got your coat off for? Uh, Mother and I are going to bring Grandpa's bureau down here. Are we pinching it before Aunt Elizabeth comes? Uh, no, my child. Grandpa gets to your mother before he dies. This morning? Yes, yes, this morning. Ah, he was drunk this morning. Hush, you must never say he was drunk now. I've got a best now. Our class is worth nothing, and this always appeals to me. There. That's Grandpa's class. It's 
ours now. Come, Mr. and Henry, Victoria, don't read a word to your aunt and uncle about the clock and the bureau. I thought you could the father was a good girl. Chapter 4, 
The sky stands forgotten by something like you, but the spot that contains us is sacred to me. No, that'll never do. You don't say it's scared to me. It's in the paper. You wouldn't say that if you're saying it properly. It's sacred, not scared, and the size is different in poetry. What the license, you know? No, that'll never do. We want the book that says how much we love him and refers to all his good qualities. And say, what a heavy loss you've had. You want a whole poem that costs a good lot. We'll think about it after tea. Then we'll look for the sticks of stuff and make a list out of them. They're all in this room, right? Yes, but there's no jewelry or valuables, that's all. Except the book Watch you comes with Jimmy. Promise you're Jimmy? I've never heard of that. Oh, but he did the Leah when he was living with us. He was so fond of her Jimmy. Well, I don't know. Anyhow, there's his insurance money. Have you got the receipt for the premium he paid this morning? I've not seen it. Mother, I don't think Grandpa went to pay his insurance this morning. He went out. Yes, but he didn't go into the town to register a hotel, so down the street, and then went on to St. Philip's Church. See the ring of bells, I'll be sure. The ring of bells? Yeah, the ring of bells. The pub that John Shirk would have paid. He's always hanging back there. Oh, he hasn't paid it. Do you think he hasn't paid it? Was it overdue? I should think it's overdue. But he's not paid. It's half a word. The drunken old beggar. He's done it on purpose just to annoy us. After all these years I've done for him, to put up in this house for three years, there's nothing but short of the swindling. I had to put up with him for five years. And you're trying to turn him over all this time. But we don't know for certain if he's not paid his no, no. I know. It's all over me that he hasn't. Victoria, go fetch the bunch of keys that's on your grandfather's dressing table. Yes. But I don't want to. Don't talk so slowly. There's nothing that can hurt you. And grab your seat that's locked up in his bureau. In where? In this thing? Where did you get that, Amelia? It's new since I was got here. Oh, Henry picked it up one day. I like it. It's artistic. Did you get it in an auction? Uh, where did I buy it, Amelia? Yes, yes. At an auction. Oh, second hand. Don't your ignorance then. All second hand things are artistic. Look at those old masters. Mother, mother! What is it? Grandpa's getting up! What? Grandpa's getting up! The child's crazy! Don't talk so silly. Don't you know that Grandpa's dead? No, no, no.
I don't see them. Why, Henry, you've got them on. Uh, I told him to put them on to stretch them. Now, Henry. Well, I don't call that delicate. Stepping in dead snatch in such haste. Oh, Grandpa, I'm glad they're not dead. Hold your tongue, Victoria. What's that? Who's not dead? Uh, Victoria says she's sorry about your head. Ah, uh, thank you, Vicky. But I'm feeling much better. He's so fond of our Victoria. Yes, he's fond of our Jimmy, too. Better ask him if he promised your Jimmy to go watch. No, I don't feel equal to it right now. Not now. <laughs> Why, Ben? You're in the morning. And Lizzie and Media. And Henry. And little Vicky. Who's gone dead? It's someone in the family. Uh, no one you know, Father. A relation of Ben's. Ah, uh, and what relation of Ben's? His uncle, brother. Brother! Brother? Honey, I never had one. Ben! Ah, uh, and what was your brother's name, Ben? Albert Friedrich. Isaac? Isaac. Isaac. And where did your brother Isaac die? Uh, Australia! Ah, uh, dear, dear. He'd be older than you, eh? Yes, five years. Aye, aye. And are you going to a funeral? Yes, of course! No, no! No, no, no of course not. Well, I suppose you've been waiting for me to begin tea. I'm feeling hungry. Uh, I'll, I'll make tea. Come along now. Sit you down and let's be jolly. Henry, keep up with me. Thank you. I'll make a start. Glad to see you've got an appetite, Mr. Merriweather. Although, you've been not so well. I've been lying down for a bit. It's nothing serious. Been to sleep, Grandfather. Uh, no, I've not been to sleep. Uh... I can't quite recall what happened. I remember I was a bit dazed, like I couldn't move an inch, hand or foot. And could you see and hear, Mr. Merriweather? Yes, but I don't remember seeing anything particular. Cream bed. I tell you, I wasn't asleep, Amelia. Damn it, I ought to know. Did you see Henry or Amelia come to your room? Uh, I'll let me think. Don't press him. Ah, by God. Amelia and Henry. What the devil do you mean by shifting my bureau out of my bedroom? You hear me? Amelia? Henry? What? Bureau? Was that grandfather? Why my bureau? The one I bought. Was it that one? Ah! That's it! What's it doing there? Eh? Drag me if that isn't my clock too! What the devil's been going on in this house? Well, I'll be hanged. I'll tell you what's been going on in this house, Father. Nothing short of robbery. Quiet, Elizabeth. Oh, I'll not be quiet. I call it double face. No, no, no. And you two, are you such a poor creature that you must do every dirty thing she tells you to do? Remember where you are, Elizabeth. Come now, no farther. My wife has every right to speak her mind. Then she can speak it outside, not in here. Damn it all! Could someone tell me what's going on? I'll not see you 
robbed grandfather? Robbed? Who's been robbing me? Amelia and Henry. They saw your club and you. They snuck into your room like Deacon and I and stole them after you were dead. After who was dead? You. But I'm not dead. No, but they thought you were. Oh, oh. So that's why you're all in black today. You thought I was dead. Well, that was a big mistake. Grandfather. It didn't take you long to divide my stuff between you. You wouldn't think like that, Grandfather. Amelia was just putting it on her account. Ah, uh, you all to keep Amelia. I suppose you thought the will wasn't fair. Did you make a will? Yes, it's locked up there in the bureau. I will fit it. Well, that doesn't matter now. I'm thinking of destroying it and making a new one. Grandfather, you'll not be hard on me. I'll trouble you for another cup of tea, Amelia. Two lumps and plenty of milk. I don't want to be hard on anyone. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since your mother died, I've lived my life part with you, Lizzie, and part with you, me. Well, I shall make a new will, leaving all my bits of stuff to whomever I shall be living with when I'm dead. How does that strike you? It's a bit of a lot to the like. And who do you intend to live for now, Grandfather? I'm coming to that. No, Grandfather. It's quite time you live with us again. We'll make you very comfortable. No, he's not been with us as long as he's been with you. I may be wrong, but after what happened, I don't think Grandfather would fancy living with you again. So you'd like to have me back, Lizzie? You can stay for as long as you want. And what do you say to that, Amelia? All I can say is that Elizabeth has changed her mind in the past two years. Grandfather, do you know what the quote between me and Elizabeth was about? Amelia, don't be a fool. Sit down. No, if I'm not to have it, you shall not either. Me and Elizabeth quote about because she said she would take you off our hands at any price. She said she had enough of you to last a lifetime and we got to keep you. It seems to me that neither of you has had any cause to feel proud about the way you've treated me. If I've done anything wrong, I'm sure I'm sorry for it. I think I can't say more than that to it. Well, it's a bit too late to say that now. Neither of you care to put up with me. No, no, Grandfather. I. Both of you say that because of what I've told you about leaving my money. Well, since you don't want me, I'll go to someone who does. Come, Mr. Merriweather. You've got to live with one of your daughters. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. On Monday next, I've got to do three things. First, I've got to go to the insurance office and pay my premium. Second, I've got to go to the lawyers and alter my will. And third, I've got to go to St. Philip's Church and get 
married. What? Get married? He's out of his senses. I say, I'm going to get married. Who to? To Mrs. John Shorts, who keeps the ring of bells. We've had it planned for quite some time now. But I was keeping it for a special occasion. I always thought I was a bit of a burden to you. So I found someone who think it a pleasure to look after me. Well, we shall be very glad to see you at the ceremony this Monday. Till 12 o'clock then, at St. Philip's Church. And it's a good thing you brought that bureau down here, Amelia. It'll be handier to carry across the ringo bells this Monday. Well then, see you at church!
time ago we told the students to do Macbeth, they did Macbeth. We told them to do spreading the news, they did. But after they stepped into the MYP program, they have an active say. They want to do a play for a cause. Therefore, the dear departed, therefore the 